back in 2014, a group of investigative reporters published a report of 28,000 pages of confidential documents accusing Luxembourg of helping companies dodge taxes in other countries as well as cut their bill at home. Companies you know such as Amazon, IKEA, Burberry, Disney, Coach, FedEx, Pepsi, Apple and 300 other multinational companies were accused of cutting deals with Luxembourg to help them avoid paying taxes in their home country's high tax rates. For example, a company like Disney that made a profit of $1 billion in Europe only paid $3.1 million in taxes just by channeling their revenues through Luxembourg, which is only 0.25%. If it would have paid the same to other European countries, which have an average tax rate of 30%, it saved itself from paying a whooping $290 million in taxes. While tax avoidance is legal, companies that use complex structures to reduce their tax bills by shifting profits to low tax jurisdictions are looked down upon by the European Commission. So it launched an investigation that saw multinational companies ordered to pay over $700 million in tax reimbursement. What came to be known as the Luxembourg Leaks, or LuxLeaks for short, became a PR disaster for the country, which had shunned the label of tax haven for the longest time. For a country in the European Union to be perceived as tied to banking secrecy was not good for business, because banking secrecy is often associated with criminality and tax avoidance. The finance minister went on to call it the worst disaster the country had ever experienced, and the Luxembourg government set up a nation branding policy to improve the image of the country. So why do so many multinational companies choose Luxembourg as the place to park their profits? And why are the citizens of this small city-state some of the richest in the world? In today's video, we explore the rise of Luxembourg as one of Europe's hidden tax havens. Welcome to another project. Leaked documents have landed Luxembourg in hot water over claims of tax avoidance on an industrial scale. Reporters claim that more than 300 multinational companies funneled hundreds of billions of euros through the country, saving billions in taxes. The Grand Duchy of Luxembourg is a tiny nation sandwiched between Germany, Belgium and France. With these powerful neighbors that seem to overshadow the significance of it in the global economy. This seemingly microscopic country has an annual GDP of about $70 billion and an average GDP per capita of $115,000. To put that into perspective, the United States, with 600 times the amount of people than Luxembourg, has an average GDP per capita of only $63,000, about half the average of this mountainous Western European country. But before it had one of the wealthiest citizens in the world, Luxembourg was the doormat of Europe. It was overrun by Burgundian, German, Spanish, Austrian and French armies wrestling for control of what pieces were left of the Holy Roman Empire. Its independence was formally attained in 1867 and has remained a flourishing constitutional monarchy. However, Luxembourg may not be on the tip of your tongue when you're planning a European vacation because unlike its neighbors, there is no defining image for it, like an Eiffel Tower, Colosseum or Big Ben. Geography did not favor the microstate either, providing no great mountains or famous landmarks. but one thing stands out about this Western European country, and that is, its booming financial sector. Before we continue, consider liking and subscribing below, it goes a long way in supporting the channel. The Grand Duchy of Luxembourg is ranked 6th in the 2020 Financial Secrecy Index, well above other famous tax havens like the British Virgin Island and Panama. It has a very large share of the market for offshore financial services at over 12% of the global total. Banking and financial services account for the majority of Luxembourg's economic output, which makes it the world's second largest investment fund and the most important private banking center in the Eurozone. While political stability, good communications combined with easy access to other European centers and skilled multilingual staff that can speak in French, Belgian, German and English are part of the reason for Luxembourg's success, but that's just not the full picture. A tradition of banking secrecy and cross-border financial expertise are the major contributors to the growth of the financial sector. That's beside the fact that 85% of Luxembourg's economy is based on banking. Notably, in March 2010, 
The Sunday Telegraph reported that most of Kim Jong-il's $4 billion in secret accounts is in Luxembourg banks. According to South Korean intelligence, much of the money was held in Swiss banks until authorities there began to tighten regulations on money laundering which made Kim's operatives withdraw the money in cash, in order not to leave a paper trail, and transferred it to banks in Luxembourg. So, what makes Luxembourg such a banking behemoth? The short answer, Luxembourg is a tax and regulatory haven for the financial sector. It offers large international companies the opportunity to virtually locate their seat of exploitation there and therefore pay taxes there. Said taxes are extremely low and said companies make gigantic saves by not paying proper taxes in the lands where they are effectively active. This makes it extremely productive economically. With people making on average double the average American salary, this means that education and specialized workers in private sectors are two primary reasons why the little nation became the little nation that could. Luxembourgers enjoy the highest per capita gross domestic product in the world. With it being so little, those small amounts of taxes on big companies' profits still mean a considerable income for the government. There is a lack of need for public roadworks and infrastructure because of the relatively small size of the country and because there is not much spending done on the military, which consists of a mere 800 soldiers, the government does not have to squander away assets. Instead, they invest heavily to ensure that taxes are kept relatively low and that the financial environment is favorable to investors. These has sent large companies into a frenzy to set up their regional European headquarters there. For example, in 2019, a report found that Amazon had reported $63 billion of revenue in Luxembourg. If the amount had related to sales made in Luxembourg, it would mean Amazon had sold an average of $102,000 of goods and services to every resident of the tiny Grand Duchy. The loophole is Amazon is not required to publicly disclose where sales were actually made, which allows it and other tech giants to gain an advantage over competitors by legally shifting profits to tax havens as a key factor in the company's growing dominance. When the Luxembourg leaks came out, it showed that the country used the big four largest law firms to cut tax deals with big companies. According to the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, leaked document reveal details about the sophisticated tax deals of more than 340 companies, including Walt Disney, Quirch Industries, Pepsi, IKEA, AIG, FedEx, Skype, and many other multinationals. Luxembourg started out in the 90s when it became notorious for helping Belgian dentists and other modestly wealthy customers from neighboring countries hide their incomes. Today, around $3 trillion is invested in mutual funds and other investment vehicles domiciled in Luxembourg. Only the United States has a bigger fund industry. But Luxembourg wants to shed its tax haven status. One of the main reasons is the European Commission has been putting pressure on countries to be more transparent about their banking. Europe loses well over a trillion dollars a year through tax evasion and the more divisive and politically delicate issue of legal tax avoidance. So in propose a financial sharing system among European countries and other tax havens like Monaco and Liechtenstein. Another reason is the bad reputation that tax havens have, which are often abused to avoid taxes, launder criminals' money, and hide the mechanisms of white-collar crime and how a global network supports illegal economic activity. So let us know in the comments, do you think it's bad for Luxembourg to help these companies avoid taxes? Also let us know what are your thoughts on tax havens in general. We'll be lurking to see your interesting takes. To see how Taiwan secretly runs the world, click here, and to learn about Switzerland's gold bunkers, click here. That's all we have today, thanks for watching.